This is a tutorial on how to replace the Emacs display in an Emacs One rack. Um, first thing I'm going to make a note of is here's a new display. Here's the original EL display. You're going to notice that there are two pins on this side and they do not exist obviously on this uh, new display. Those are for the backlight. You'll see that there are two pins here, and those pins would have been for an LED backlight, but that's not uh, needed on this unit as well. And if you take the displays and you look at the placement of the pins, you'll see that this should be able to just simply plug in there. So we'll set these aside. You need a number one Phillips to remove the screws. Once you've done that, if you have something of the same height, then you can simply take the top, lift it at an angle slightly, pull it up about an inch, and then you can turn it over and set it on your object next to the unit. You don't even have to unplug that audio board there. So the next step would be to take a number two Phillips and remove the screws that hold this. I've pre-loosened some of these a little bit. It may be easier to remove the hard drive mounting uh, or floppy drive mounting here uh, to get to this screw. Once you've done that, you need to pull the display connector straight up. And at this point, you can remove the display panel. So once you have the display board out, then the next step is going to be uh, removing the original display in place up here. So you're going to have two pins here and 14 pins over here to desolder. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now the best way to desolder uh, factory solders is to go and add a little of solder to the connections first before you attempt the unsoldering. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now that that's complete, we are ready to begin desoldering. Most people are just going to have a desoldering tool like this, and uh, they're about $10 at an at a electronic store. Um, preferably get one uh, that uh, has an anti-static tip. It's not required, but uh, always handier to have a static safe unit. So next, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start desoldering this here. And I actually have a paste. So I have an easier desoldering uh, task here. check if the pins are free by pushing on them just a tab and I'm going to use a small flat head and see if it comes up okay so those two were perfect and this side might still have some connection here most important thing is patience 
Sometimes your connections aren't going to just come off like that, and in that case, resolder the particular joint which you believe might be causing you a little trouble. And sometimes it's very helpful to have some additional light, like a flashlight or something, to get a better view on it. I think it's perhaps this connection right there. So I'm going to try that first. Now that you've got the old display out, and hopefully you haven't damaged any traces or any of the, the uh, little paths that uh, these go through, you're going to go ahead and place the new display. Now one thing that might be a little bit of concern is that um, since we don't have two pins over here now, there's nothing to support that. So it might be useful to get a screw and just um, put, a, put a screw in there so that you can avoid uh, any uh, wiggle there. So I happen to have a screw from an Emacs uh, display panel which I had from an Emacs 2 that was destroyed in shipping. So I just stole a screw from that. I can't be certain of the size. I don't know if it's a number 440 by like uh, 3 8 inch or something like that. Um, basically, um, I'll try and find out a little bit more about what that screw is uh, and uh, post it in the, in the notes. So at this point, I have a screw here. I haven't tightened it up because at this point, we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to want to solder this, this on. I've left a little slack there. Now there is a little bit of a, <coughs> excuse me, there's one particular piece on this display that sticks out. And so therefore, uh, we're going to want to kind of balance there, uh, trying to get these close uh, along with not trying to flex anything. So just as long as these two boards are parallel then uh, you should be you should be pretty good. You don't want to put any undue stress. Um, this board is thinner so actually this board is going to be the one that's going to bend. Um, so you know like I said you can put once you determine the width there uh, you could actually make a spacer either using some washers or some nuts and washers uh, in there, you know, to fill that gap. What I'm probably going to do is take the spacer from the original display and uh, trim it down just a tad. Uh, the spacer that is on the original display panel for this Emacs 2 display that I had was actually too... Um, uh, too much depth, so it didn't actually fit in there. So I'll have to trim it down. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and solder these pins on this side. holding this here, I'm going to just tack one pin so that I can keep it from moving. And then I'll tack another pin, um, the rest of the pins after that. Now that I've got all the pins uh, soldered on there, the next thing that would be a good idea so that uh, you're not taking it apart several times 
would be to verify that you have continuity between your pins and the main connector that goes out to the logic board. So you can simply use a multimeter and then you can put it in continuity mode and then you can follow your pins back and then and my lights not very good here and uh, at that point you can go ahead and ring out as we call it the pins and make sure that everything got connected for example gotta turn this on and we would expect to hear there we go okay so looking at looking at the wrong pin. So you've got to go through and basically am I touching the wrong pin there? Yeah, okay. So you can see how this works. Again, my light is very low in here, so it'll take me a few minutes to do this, um, but that would be the, the best thing to do. And then once you're done and verified that all your pins are connected, then you want to clip these off. This connector is longer because the Emacs keyboard, uh, the display is different. And if I show you one here, you can see this pins pass through. Since I don't know who's going to have a keyboard and who's going to have a rack, I got to put the longer pins on everything. Uh, just makes it simpler. Uh, also, more cost effective to um, buy 10 of one item than to buy you know, five of one length and five of another length. Uh, so I'm gonna pin this out now, make sure it's all good, and then we'll go ahead and we'll stick it back in and verify operation. So one thing of note is pin three um, is used by the LCD angle on the old display. Um, don't bother tracing that pin back because it's not used on this display. There is no angle on an OLED display. Um, additional final note is that um, some folks have talked about removing the inverter if it's causing some noise. The inverter supplied high voltage for the old EL foil backlight and it's not used. It is located right here and if it, you desire you can certainly remove that, remove the logic board, and remove that. But for all intents and purposes, with this display, it's not relevant. It doesn't hook up. It doesn't connect to this new display in any way. And so there's no traces to be cut to prevent it from connecting, like with an LCD display that has an LED backlight, which are usually 5 volts and would get blown out by the high voltage. So again, uh, here's the inverter. If you want to remove it, you can. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial because it's not needed.